Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today, it's all about comparative genomics. In this video, we'll take a look at processes for comparing genes between organisms, such as amino acid sequencing, DNA hybridization, and phylogenetic trees. We have a lot to do, so let's get started. Today, we're talking about comparing genes between organisms and using that information to give us indications on which species are more closely related to each other. Now, fundamentally, you may assume, and you'd be correct, that species with more similar DNA are more closely related, but you may not necessarily understand why this is the case. Well, the reason for this comes back to the idea that all life on Earth evolved from a common ancestor, and that over time, small mutations which gave rise to an evolutionary advantage led to the development of new species and that over millions of years, this constant rate of mutation and birth of new species gave rise to the diversity of life we see today. Following this thought, it should make sense that species that come from common ancestors closer to the current day and are therefore more closely related should have DNA that's more similar, as their DNA has a less time for random mutations to alter. These relationships can be seen on what's called phylogenetic trees, which generally run from left to right, with the further left you go being further back in time. These trees give an indication of times in history where species broke off from their common ancestor and became new species. And this type of split in evolution is referred to as divergent evolution, as the two new species diverge away from a common ancestor. As we've already discussed, species with common ancestors closer to the current date are seen to be more closely related and will have fewer differences in their DNA as there's been less time for their DNA to mutate independently. A useful tool used by scientists studying these relationships are called phylogenetic trees. And taking a look at the following example, we can see how they can be used. Looking at this tree, we can now decipher that. There's a common ancestor for each of the four primates. That each branching point indicates where species of primates separated from other groups. That the human and chimpanzees share the most recent common ancestor, and thus would be expected to have the most DNA in common. And that the orangutan has been separated from the other three primates for the longest period of time, and probably has more differences in their DNA when compared to the other primates. Now that we understand why we can compare DNA and tell relationships and how phylogenetic trees work, let's take a look at techniques used to actually compare the DNA in the first place. The four commonly used techniques are DNA sequencing, DNA profiling, DNA hybridization, and amino acid sequencing. Now in this video, we'll look at hybridization and amino acid sequencing. And please refer back to our videos on profiling and sequencing earlier in this course if you've forgotten those techniques. Let's start with amino acid sequencing. From previous sections in this course, we know that proteins are made a sequence of amino acids and that those sequences are dictated by the code of bases in DNA. So it should make logical sense that if scientists compare amino acid sequences from proteins of two different species, then the degree of similarity between them should correlate with the similarity in DNA sequences and therefore show how closely related they are. To be able to compare the proteins between species, scientists need to identify examples of proteins that have been maintained throughout evolutionary history, which means they're crucial to the survival in most species. Cytochromes, such as cytochrome C, are proteins that are necessary in aerobic respiration of virtually all living species, which makes them really good candidates for comparison. Now this protein varies slightly from one species to another, and again, the degree of similarity indicates the closeness of the evolutionary relationships. An example of this can be seen when comparing humans with other organisms. The sequences for human and chimpanzee match in all 104 amino acid positions, whereas it differs from rabbit cytochrome C in 9 amino acids and in 45 amino acids from yeast. Let's now take a look at DNA hybridization, which is a process that physically joins together the DNA from two different species and sees how well they join. The degree of binding gives a good indication of how similar the strands are and therefore how closely related the two species are. The steps in this process are as follows. First, the particular gene sequence to be compared between the two species is isolated using gene probes and enzymes. Second, the DNA of the two species is heated to 95 degrees to separate the strands. Third, the strands are mixed together and allowed to cool, enabling hybrid DNA to form. Fourth, the strands are reheated to work out the melting point of the hybrid DNA. The melting point is defined as the temperature at which 50% of the DNA is single-stranded and 50% is double-stranded. Essentially, the higher the melting point, the more common the DNA must have been, as there must have been more bonding between them. So to summarise, the higher the melting point, the greater similarity between the DNA sequences, and the more likely it is that they shared a more recent common ancestor. Well that's it for comparative genomics, I hope it helped, and as always, check back soon for more concept videos.